Hello everyone, welcome to another Friday new product post here at SparkFun Electronics. We've got some new stuff for you this week, so let's go ahead and see what we have. First up, this is the Clockit Kit, now in fancy, beautiful retail packaging. It has this lovely clamshell, this nice little insert on the back, little barcode. This is special. The clock kit is a very simple soldering kit that is all through holes, so it's, you know, made for beginners and such. You solder this together and you get your own clock, as the name would suggest. It has an alarm on it, all sorts of stuff, comes with the wall warp, pretty much comes with everything you need except for the soldering iron, the skill, and the journey. Next up, we've got a new sensor. This is the MAG3110. This is not necessarily a new sensor. It's a new revision of an older sensor. Uh, I've done some of the feedback that we had on the comments. We now have a jumper to enable or disable the pull-up resistors. That was a common comment that everyone wanted. Um, we also fixed the footprint and did all the other stuff that we do um, just to make it easier for our production department to make. Magnetometers are pretty much exactly what you'd think. They're like digital compasses. They tell you your heading. So whereas an accelerometer would tell you, you know, where you're moving, a gyro would tell your um, rotation, a magnetometer is useful for telling you your heading. It doesn't necessarily tell you your movement, but it tells you where you're pointing. And a triple axis like this can tell you in both the X, the Y, and the Z, so it's good for relative positioning. As with all of our breakout boards, this does fit into a standard 0.1 inch spaced breadboard. So you can throw some headers on that guy, pop it down the breadboard and start magnetometizing or reading your magnetic heading. We carry three different filaments for the TAS4 3D printer. Uh, we carry each one in a variety of colors, but I thought today that we should talk about the actual material differences between these types of filament. Uh, here I have all three of them sitting next to the printer. Uh, the printer is loaded up with a flexible filament, and then we have two of our standard thermoplastic filaments. The most popular of the three filaments is going to be ABS, or acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. And that's a thermoplastic that has a relatively high melting point. So the nozzle temperature on that is going to be something like 230, 240 degrees. And then your print surface, if you have a heated bed like the TAS4, is going to be up close to 80, 90. Uh, I even cranked it up to 120 degrees just to get good adhesion. Uh, the advantage to that is that the part ends up being more heat resistant because it takes more heat to get it back to its elastic point. Uh, ABS is nice because it's a little bit stronger than the other filaments. Uh, it's a little bit brittle, but it's actually not too bad. And it prints really nicely. Another filament that we carry is PLA, or polylactic acid. PLA is a biodegradable material, and it's actually made out of things like cornstarch or tapioca root. And uh, the nice thing about that is, of course, it doesn't uh, off-gas anything while it's being heated for extrusion. And also, it's biodegradable, so it's better for the environment all the way around. The downside is that it is a little bit less... Uh, thermostable so you can get it you don't have to get it quite as hot as ABS before it starts to melt there is an upside to that of course which is that you don't have to get your printer or your extrusion head quite as hot to make a good looking part so PLA extrudes at something like 130 140 degrees with a bed temperature of 80 degrees maybe and you get really good adhesion that way the third type of filament that we carry is a really cool material called NinjaFlex. Now I'm not sure exactly what NinjaFlex is made out of, it's probably a trade secret, but they call it a thermoplastic elastomer, and that is what it is. It's a thermoplastic, you can extrude it with a hot nozzle the same way you do any of these filaments, but when it comes out, it's, uh, it's elastic, it's flexible. Uh, this is really good for making parts that need to move a little bit. If you need a live hinge, or if you just need something that has a little bit of squish to it, uh, then this is an awesome material to use. NinjaFlex extrudes at about the same temperature as ABS, so you have to get it pretty hot. 
230, maybe 220 degrees. But the bed temperature doesn't have to be quite that hot um, because the bed can be at about 50 degrees and the Ninja Flex, because it retains heat a little better, is gonna stay melty and stick to the printing bed uh, regardless. So you don't have to crank that up quite as high as if you're printing ABS. Uh, the Ninja Flex actually, despite the fact that it stays gummy for longer, uh, prints really well. Of the three materials, I probably had the least trouble using the Ninja Flex with the Flexi Struder head, uh, followed by the ABS, which was pretty easy. Uh, the hardest material for me to work with was the PLA, but uh, that's entirely, it's entirely possible that that's just because I didn't have the, uh, it took me a while to get the configuration right. So what I've done here in order to compare the properties of each of these materials is I've printed the same L bracket in each of the three, so ABS, PLA, and Ninja Flex. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up each of these and uh, between two fingers like this, I'm gonna try to snap it in half. And I imagine it'll happen right at the corner uh, where uh, it stops being with the grain and starts being against the grain. And then you'll, you'll, get, um, you'll get a breakage there. I actually cannot do that. So that actually took quite a bit of effort um, to get a break in the part. It did break where I suspected it would. Okay, now we're going to move on to the PLA, and I'm gonna see if the PLA breaks under the same amount of strain as the ABS. So here we go. Ah, so that didn't take quite as much effort as the ABS. I suspect because the ABS extrudes at a higher temperature, there's probably a little better bonding between the layers, and so this probably cracked along one printing layer. Finally, I'm going to try the same test on the Ninja Flex, but I don't think it's going to break because it's such a flexible uh, elastomer, but we can try. I can bend that uh, all the way against itself in a tight bend and uh, it doesn't break, so um, under repeated stress that may eventually give out, but for now it looks like it's, uh, well, it's going to hold up. Now what I'm going to do to try to give you an idea of how easy these materials are to machine is I'm going to take a small drill bit and try to drill a hole in each of these pieces that we have. The idea of drilling a hole in each of these pieces is that one of them uh, has the grain going this way and one has it going uh, with the layers, so they may machine differently. First thing I'm going to do is just drill a couple holes in our ABS and uh, we'll see what happens. Well. That worked. Uh, nice clean hole and no separation between the layers. Now let's go for the other piece. And again, that's a nice clean hole and no separation. So I'd say that probably works uh, really well. Next, we'll try the PLA. So the PLA surprisingly took a lot more effort to get through. Um, I think it's a little gummier than the ABS. Uh, also, uh, I ended up drilling uh, two holes in this piece, trying to get a, a nice clean hole all the way through, and it did crack along the grain. So um, let's see if that same thing happens if we go uh, with this piece. So here's the hole I ended up making in that piece of PLA. Um, the thing about the PLA is I had a hard time even getting the bit to bite into it. Um, not because it's hard, but because it's so uh, sort of oily. It may be good for making bearings or washers, but um, it's not particularly good for machining. Finally, let's try drilling a hole in the Ninja Flex. I suspect the drill bit will go through, but we probably won't get a clean hole since it uh, has so much give in it. Much as I suspected, the drill bit punched right through the material. Um, but because the material is so gummy, uh, it actually won't make a nice round clean hole. It just kind of wants to, the drill bit just wants to go through and sort of flap around in there. So um, the Ninja Flex probably no good to machine. You want your part to come out of the 3D printer ready to use. Mm -hmm.